Hey guys! Hey guys! We're back with a brand new Supergirl review. This time we're reviewing Supergirl Season 1, Episode 12, titled Bizarro. If you haven't seen it yet and you want to avoid any spoilers, you're going to want to skip this video and come back later because everything we say from this point forward is going to be a spoiler. I'll tell you what. Never have I ever wanted a villain to die more than Maxwell Lord. Yeah. I, uh, which is a tribute to the performance. Yeah, yeah, it is. But um, like I hate him more than I hated the governor. <laughs> he <laughs> He's such a pompous jerk. Yeah. It's fun to hate him. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot of fun to hate him. Yeah. And he, he ends the episode, he's locked up at the DEO, but that's not going to last long. Mm -mm. So, somebody in the government or somebody's going to find out and they're going to have to let him out and the deo i think it's going to be shut down by the end of the year and that's going to be like a thing next season that yeah, is like the, the, the deo kind of working you on know, their own on, on their own and halfway like on the run kind of a thing i think that might be a thing next season that could be really interesting yeah it could and all because alex went rogue and arrested maxwell lord and hank chews her out for it yeah. But she lets him have it. Yeah, and by the end of the episode, I think he's um on board. Yeah. Like, he's like, uh, okay, he, I was wrong. You were right. Yeah. <laughs> but in, in the end, I think it's going to come around and bite them. And this episode is full of people saying things and doing things that are really going to come back to bite them in the butt later on. Yeah, yeah. And one of those moments is when Wynn and James are drowning their sorrows together. And Wynn kind of gives James, like, a romantic pep talk. Yeah, kind of. It's like he's accepted the fact that Kara's not going to feel for him what he feels for her, and he wants her to move on, and, you know, he, he knows how she feels about James, and he knows how James feels about her, so it's like, they're both his friends. In the end, he does want them both to be happy. And I think he's trying to do the good thing, but I think he ult I mean... That's, that's a really tough position to be in. Yeah. And I think ultimately he's going to regret, you know, because I, I do think James is eventually going to make his move on Kara. Yeah, me too. I think he's going to end things with yeah. Lucy and, yeah. And, and Wynn, uh, he's not going to be able to handle that. And I really want Wynn to, Wynn to turn villain. I want yeah. him to be Toy Man 2. That would be awesome. Yeah. And I, I, I just I feel like that's the way it's going. Okay, the villain of the week this week was Bizarro. And Bizarro was my favorite Superman villain as a kid. From the very first time I saw him, I think it was on Super Friends way back in the day. And this is a very different take on, on Bizarro. And they, they kind of had to do it this way to make it friendly for TV. Because if you look at like the, the cartoon version of Bizarro, he was like... The, born on like a po like the opposite planet. Like the planet was like a cube instead of a... a, a Sphere? Sphere, yeah. One of those things. <laughs> one of the round ones. <laughs> the round thingies. Yeah. And ju it just, uh, if you did that on TV, I think it would have been silly, and I don't think it would have gone over. Yeah, no, you can't do a square planet on TV. Yeah. No. I, th I think it just would have been too silly, and I think the way they did do it, with it being a genetic manipulation yeah, from Maxwell Lord is like, better. Um, when he tries to basically clone Supergirl, instead of getting Supergirl, he gets the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. um, but what's interesting is that her personality and her emotions and her self is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's just all her powers are completely opposite. Yeah, which is really interesting because at the end they have this bonding moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want her to come back. I, I like her. I would like to see her redeem herself and yeah. come back from this and everything be good. I would love to see Bizarro again. Yeah. The, I, I really enjoyed this version of Bizarro. I thought it was great. Yeah. Moving on to the love rectangle now. Kara's relationship with Adam is basically over before it even began. Yeah, and um, I think that she kind of got swept up in the whole thing and she didn't think it through and realize that there's no way she can date somebody and be Supergirl. Mm -hmm. Like, she can't explain all of those things. She And she'd be per putting the person at risk, which is fine if they're aware that they're at risk, and he wouldn't be. Because you can't just come out to somebody and be like, oh, by the way, I'm Supergirl. Are yeah. you still cool with us dating? <laughs> and this is a thing that every superhero has to go through. Yeah. Clark Kent went through it with Lois Lane. Peter Parker went through it with Gwen Stacy and then Mary Jane. 
every superhero goes through this. And it's fun to see it going the other way with a female superhero yeah. dealing with... Where she realizes, like, she tries, and then it's like... I, I think she got a little discouraged after the first night when she had to leave and save mm. the people. And then when she got kidnapped in front of them, I think that's when she realized, like, I can't be Supergirl and have a boyfriend at the same time. It's not going to work. And what was really interesting was Bizarro, she took James. She she didn't take Adam, who yeah. was, like, there with her kissing when she abducted Kara. Yeah. So, like, even then, Bizarro knew that Kara didn't have actual genuine feelings for Adam. Yeah. Even though she wanted to. Yeah, it's just, well, it wasn't there yet. I mean, they'd yeah. only known each other for, like, a week. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's... It, and that's because... Bizarro basically is Supergirl. Like, Emotionally, yeah, the she same. she knew that that's who Kara loved because that's who she loves. Mm -hmm. And the episode ended on a cliffhanger with the giant tentacle tentacle beast. octopus thing attacking Kara in her apartment, which you can assume it was planted by one of Maxwell Lord's people. Yes, and um, I just I that episode looks amazing. I'm <laughs> like the, really yeah, the preview. For next I'm like, it looks good. Ah, it looks so good. The next episode, she's going to be living like in her own fantasy dream world. Yeah. And it's going to it's 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 going to be awesome. Dream episodes are kind of risky, but just from the promo, it looks it, like yeah, it's going to be really amazing. good. Amazing. And it's it looks amazing because she it, it seems like she's going to realize right away that this isn't mm -hmm. A, like this isn't real and I hope so because almost always in dream episodes the person doesn't realize that they're in a dream and even though everything is perfect they don't they just don't seem to question it and I like that it seems like she's gonna question it yeah and and maybe the dream will shift then to a more plausible scenario because from the promo she's on Krypton and everything is perfect yeah so maybe the monster like realizes that she knows it's a dream maybe it'll shift the dream and make and it make harder it, to realize yeah. or something like that yeah. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it, but like I said, dream episodes are really risky, but from what we've seen so far, and we haven't seen much, yeah. it looks really good. The preview looks awesome. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's it for this review. If we missed something, if there's something you think we should have mentioned that we didn't, or if we got something wrong, let us know down in the comments and we can discuss it. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to tell us by clicking that like button and subscribe for more reviews. And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.